Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I'm going to be telling you about my favourite books of 2021. So, I've read many wonderful books in 2021 um, and today I just want to tell you about some of my absolute favourite books that I read last year. Um, some of these were published last year, most of these were published uh, before last year, um, but these are books that I read in 2021 that I absolutely loved. Um, I have a list of 20 because, you know, I'm not very good at narrowing things down. All of these books are fantastic, I cannot recommend them enough, but yeah, let's get straight into the books. At number 20 I have Pride by E.B. Zaboy. This is a YA Pride and Prejudice retelling that I read back in in Jane Austen July and just thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed. It was just such an enjoyable read, such good fun, but also dealing wonderfully with some really serious themes beneath it. So this, as I said, is a Pride and Prejudice retelling um, and it's set in Brooklyn in um, the 21st century following a 17 year old girl um, and her family and what happens when a much wealthier family move in across the road. It was one of those fantastic classic retellings which I think was like true to the original story and brought the original story to the modern day while also like looking at some really interesting different themes in a really clever way and kind of combining like humour and social criticism in the way that Jane Austen does. So I thoroughly enjoyed Pride and I would highly recommend it. At number 19 I have Lord Edgware Dies by Agatha Christie. This is one of the Poirot murder mystery books and one that I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed. I really like Agatha Christie's books a lot um, and me and my husband Nick are currently working our way through the Poirot books in order, listening to them on audiobook. I really enjoyed Lord Edgware Dies. I thought it was a really great mystery with a really good finale, a really fun setup and a lot of wonderful characters. One of the things I love about Agatha Christie is I think her characterization is just amazing. At the beginning of the book uh, we meet Lord Edgware's wife um, who is not getting on very well with her husband and wants to get a divorce from him um, and she persuades Poirot to go and see her husband on her behalf to plead for a divorce which he does. Um, Lord Edgware agrees to a divorce says he's quite happy to divorce his wife and then the next day Lord Edgware is found dead and everything goes on from there. It is a really great mystery, really good fun as Agatha Christie always is um, and I highly highly recommend it. At number 18 I have a French classic, La Dame aux Camélia by Alexandre Dumas Fille. This is one I read quite early on in 2021 and really really enjoyed. Um, so this is a very short novel which tells the story of a young man and his relationship with um, a kind of courtesan I suppose who he gets involved with. Um, it is really really powerful, really well written with fantastic characterization, really great scenes um, and a really kind of interesting frame narrative that I really enjoyed. Just thoroughly thoroughly love this one. Um, one of those classics that I kind of didn't know very much about when I started reading it and so it kind of came even more as a surprise to me. I really fell in love with the story and really enjoyed the characterization so this is definitely a book that I would recommend. At number 17 I have The Tolstoy Estate by Stephen Conte. This is a historical fiction book that came out um, fairly recently and which I read earlier this year and really really enjoyed. This is one of the books I read when I was reading along with the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this one. It is a really really fantastic book. The Tolstoy estate is set in Russia during the Second World War and we're following a man called Bauer who is a German military doctor and he and his battalion are stationed at the house that once belonged to Leo Tolstoy. Um, so they are stationed there, they've turned it into a military hospital which apparently is a real thing that did happen during the Second World War um, and the book is about him and the men around him and his relationship with a Russian woman who he meets um, who is kind of the caretaker of Tolstoy's house um, and who refuses to leave and it's all about the relationship between these two people as well as being like so much about the history of this particular point in time and there was just so much that I loved about the Tolstoy estate. It was one of those books that I listened to it on audiobook and I read it fairly slowly and it just crept up on me and then by the end I was just completely in love with it. I feel like the characterization and the complexity of the character psychology in the Tolstoy estate was fantastic and as well this book managed to be one of those novels where it's very much about the two characters, the two central characters, but every minor character was incredibly well developed too and was really like complex and real in a really powerful way. Um, many of them dislikable, but like all of the characters were so well developed and the look at history um, and this particular point in time was fantastic and I just highly, highly recommend it. It is a truly wonderful book. Now I'm talking about the Tolstoy State, I feel like maybe it should be higher up on this list, but you know, it's a fairly arbitrary ranking, it's fine, but I did I did really love it. I think maybe I loved it more than the next book, but you know, it's fine. We'll just stick with the ranking for now. 
Anyway, at number 16, I have Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro, which I really, really enjoyed. I really love Ishiguro's work a lot. I've read all of his books um, and I love nearly all of them very, very, very much. Um, some of his books are my favourites of all time. Um, and I read his new release, Clara and the Sun, this year and really, really enjoyed it. This is a novel which tells a story um, of a artificial intelligence, an artificial friend, Clara. Um, she has been created to be the kind of friend and companion of children. Um, and we begin the book where she is sitting in a shop waiting to be bought and she ends up getting taken home by um, a young girl who is unwell. In many ways this book looks at Clara's life and Clara's memory and Clara looking back on her life from a later point. Um, and I just loved so much about this. What I really liked about this book I think was that it it's a really, really interesting world, like the um, near future world set up in this book is fascinating, but we also sort of don't know that much about it. A lot of it is kept back and we just kind of learn about it in like little details. Um, and I feel like some people would find that a bit like frustrating, but I found it like just wonderful. I just really, really enjoyed it and felt like it was really kind of just, just such a fascinating world and such a fascinating read. And I really like it when Ishiguro writes about like, what it means to be alive, I suppose. Um, and I also love it when he writes about memory. So this was just a truly fantastic read. I did an individual book review of this at the time, which I'll link down below. And this was just a really, really wonderful read. Definitely one I would recommend. At number 15, I have Ellen Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. This is a book that came out several years ago and was very popular at the time. Um, and I just had never got around to reading it until the beginning of this year when I finally read it. And I really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. This is a book about a young woman called Ellen Oliphant who is kind of struggling in life. She has no friends, she doesn't really have many people in her life. Um, she goes to work every day um, when she gets home from work. One day a week she calls her mother um, and on the weekends she gets really drunk on her own in her flat um, and then wakes up and goes to work again. Um, and she kind of lives outside of society. And at the beginning of this book, um, a chance coincidence throws her into the path of one of her colleagues um, and they end up kind of becoming friends. And the book is about their friendship and how that helps Eleanor understand herself and her situation more. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed this. I think it's a really great, wonderful read that is really like emotionally powerful um, with some fantastic character development um, where it is kind of funny and strange um, and Eleanor Orphan is a completely um, strange character who at times is very very dislikable but you also come to understand and like her I mean I really liked Danny the guy that she becomes friends with and I really liked um, their kind of growing friendship I thought that was done really really well like for me this is very much a book about friendship which I really enjoyed and it was just a thoroughly enjoyable read so definitely one I would recommend worth the hype um, but I'm glad I finally got around to reading it after all these years. At number 14 I have The House by the Churchyard by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. This is a Victorian book that I read in Victober and thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed. I really like J. Sheridan Le Fanu. I think he's a great writer um, and this was a wonderful book. This was written in the Victorian period as I said but it's actually I think set in the 18th century and we're following various characters who all live in this small town outside of Dublin but we know from the beginning that something sinister is about to happen because the book kind of starts off with various people in a churchyard digging up a skull that has two holes in it um, and then we kind of flash back to the past and when we know that we're going to find out how this person ended up with these two holes in their skull. So you know from the beginning that there's going to be some kind of mystery going on, it's a bit of a sensationalist novel, there's lots of secrets and lies and there is a fantastic villain who is drawn wonderfully and I just thought it was a great read. I really like Jay Sheridan Le Fanu and his characterization and his complex plots are just really good fun to read so I really loved The House by the Churchyard, definitely one that I would recommend. At number 13 I have Last Night by Varya McFarlane. This is a contemporary novel I read in December, I listened to it on audiobook and I thoroughly thoroughly loved it. Last Night is such a wonderful read. I'd read one book by Varya McFarlane before um, but this is definitely my favourite of hers so far and it was just fantastic. Last Night follows a woman called Eve, she's in her early 30s and she has three best friends and they've all been best friends since sixth form um, and Eve has always been a little bit in love with one of her best friends Ed, even though he at the very start of the novel gets engaged to somebody else. But that night there is an accident and that changes the relationships between these people forever and it changes Eve's life forever and it makes her kind of reevaluate all her relationships in her life. Um, this book is a rom-com like it has a fantastic love story going through it and it is absolutely hilarious there are some wonderfully funny moments but it is also very much a book about grief 
um, which looks at and explores grief um, in such a fantastic, moving, powerful way. It is such a wonderful, wonderful book, really emotional, really powerful, really like satisfying at the end, but also like so heartfelt throughout. And I just highly, highly recommend it. I absolutely loved it. What a book, cannot recommend it enough. And number 12, I have The Night Watch by Sarah Waters. Um, this is a book I also read in December and one that I really, really loved. Um, this is set in the 1940s, um, but it has quite an interesting structure in that it works backwards. Um, so we start off part one in 1947, then part two is in 1944, and then part three is in 1941. Um, so we meet all these characters in 1947, and there are four characters who we're kind of following in post-war London, um, and then we kind of learn as we go back in time how they're connected to each other um, and what their backstories are. There are so many things that I loved about this book. Um, it is less plot driven than Sarah Waters' other novels. I would say this is very much like a character study and a study of a particular point in time, but I feel like the characterization and the relationships between these characters felt so real and so wonderfully drawn and the historical detail was so fascinating and so interesting and so well done and I just thoroughly, thoroughly loved this. I thought this was such a beautiful, wonderful read. And Sarah Waters writes about kind of relationships um, and, I don't know, memory and the way people are kind of connected to their past in such a fantastic way. I just thoroughly, thoroughly love this and I highly, highly recommend it. At number 11, I have The Haunting Season. This is a short story collection. This is an anthology of ghost stories by various writers, um, the writers being Bridget Collins, Imogen Hermes Gower, Kieran Millwood Hargrave, Andrew Michael Hurley, Jess Kidd, Elizabeth McNeil, Natasha Pulley and Dora Purcell. And I loved this so much. There were so many wonderful, wonderful stories in here. I loved every story, some more than others of course, but I just thought this was such a fantastic read. Um, it was really nice as well to just read a collection of stories written by like some of my favourite historical fiction writers. Nearly every story in this book was um, historical. Most of them were set in the Victorian period at Christmas, which you know is everything I love. I really liked how all the stories were like a little bit spooky but not too spooky like none of them were really horror stories in fact the ghost stories in this collection really did what like actual victorian ghost stories did where they were ghost stories but they were also stories with like social criticism and important character relationships like running underneath the ghosts um, and that's what this collection is too and i just loved it very 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 much i did a individual book review slash reading vlog of this so i will link that down below as well Moving into the top 10. At number 10, I have The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil. This is a wonderful work of historical fiction set in the Victorian period, which I thoroughly, thoroughly loved. So our main character is a young woman called Iris who is a dolls maker, but she desperately wants to be a painter. And early on in the book, she ends up getting involved with a member of the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood who promises to teach her how to paint in exchange for her being a model for him. And then we're also following a mysterious man called Silas who is sort of a, a taxidermist and a collector I suppose. And at the same time we're following a street urchin called Albie. All of these characters live in London, they're all linked together by various different things and their lives kind of end up entangling and things get kind of more complicated and more sinister as the book goes on. There are a lot of things I loved about this book. I feel like the character development and the kind of the way that Elizabeth McNeil slowly reveals the characters and then what they're really like was fantastic. I love that very, very much. I feel like the twists and turns were fantastic and the ending was so good. And there were moments where I was like, I thought the ending was going to go in a different way and it was going to be very, very different. And then the way it actually went was just so wonderful. And I just, yeah, I love this a lot. I thought it was fantastic. Very much my kind of historical fiction. I definitely need to read Elizabeth McNeil's newer book, Circus of Wonders, as well. I think she is a wonderful writer and writes fantastically about Victorian period and I know she's going to be an author whose career I'll be watching with a lot of interest so very very much love this one this year as well. At number nine I have the only non-fiction book on this list which is The Artful Dickens by John Mullen. This is a truly wonderful work of non-fiction which is all about the author Charles Dickens um, and the kind of different techniques he uses in his work I suppose. So the chapters are split up by like different techniques so we have um, changing tenses, laughing, naming, using coincidences, enjoying cliches, breaking the rules and things like that um, and John Mullen in this book kind of goes through um, all of these different techniques and looks at how Dickens uses them across all of his works kind of examining all of his novels um, and some of his shorter works too as like one body of literature which I just loved. I love this so much. It was such a joy to read. It made me want to reread all of Dickens immediately, uh, but I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this book. Charles Dickens is my favourite author, um, and John Mullen is probably my favourite non-fiction writer, so this was a great combination, and yeah, what a wonderful book. At number eight, I have 
An Old Man's Love by Anthony Trollope. This is a Victorian classic and one that I really, really enjoyed. Anthony Trollope is one of my favourite authors and I really, really enjoyed An Old Man's Love. It tells the story of a man in his 50s who was taken into his household, um, a young woman who is in her mid to late 20s, um, who was the daughter of an old friend of his. She has been living in his house for a while, kind of under his protection because she has nowhere else to go, and he has slowly fallen in love with her. And the book is kind of about their relationship, um, her kind of complicated feelings towards him, um, to do with duty and other things, and also how she feels kind of torn between this man um, and a man who she hasn't seen for several years, who she used to be in love with. And the book is really a kind of character study, um, looking at the relationships between various different characters and kind of how the situation goes on from there. It's one of Anthony Trollope's much more like focused books, um, which only takes place kind of over a few weeks and really kind of focuses in on a particular set of characters and a particular situation and kind of unpicks it in a way that I really, really love. I thought it was really, really nicely done um, with really kind of realistic character psychology and wonderful character relationships and a really fantastic ending. Like the plot just went in the direction I wanted it to go, uh, but I just really thoroughly enjoyed it. At number seven, and now we're really getting into my absolute favourites of the year. At number seven, um, I have Mr. Love Man by Bernadine Evaristo. This was such, such a wonderful read. I feel like um, Mr. Love Man contains some of the best characterization I've ever read in my life. Mr. Love Man tells the story of a man called Barry. He's in his 70s, I think, um, and he was born in Antigua, but he's lived in London for many, many decades. He lives with his wife, who he has been married to for a very long time, but he doesn't get on with very well. But for even longer than he's been married to his wife, he has been having a secret relationship with his best friend, Morris. And Morris and he have hidden their sexuality and their relationship um, from everyone for a very, very long time. But now that they're getting older, Barry decides one day that maybe he doesn't want to keep it a secret anymore. And this book is basically a kind of character study um, looking at these characters, the relationships between them, what's brought them to the point that they're at, what their lives have been like, and how Barry's decision is going to potentially change their lives. And it's just fantastic. Like, it's just so good. And it's simultaneously absolutely hilarious and completely heartbreaking. And the characterization, as I said, is just supreme. I would highly recommend the audiobook. I'm not sure if I would have found it quite so funny if I had um, read it rather than listened to it, but listening to it, like, the humour just came to life and it's, it was such a good book. Like, I just, I just can't express enough how amazing Mr. Love Man was and how supreme that characterization was. If you haven't read it, you absolutely should. And I really need to read more by Bernadine Everystow in the future. At number six, I have The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. This was another wonderful work of historical fiction I read in 2021 and another book actually like um, The Tolstoy State that was long listed for the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction. So The Dictionary of Lost Words is set kind of between the late 19th century and the early 20th century and it's following a woman called Esme um, and kind of her involvement in the creation of the Oxford English Dictionary um, so her father is working on the OED um, and Esme kind of becomes involved in it through him um, and the book kind of looks at the creation of the dictionary, Esme's life, her kind of coming of age and growing up as a woman especially in a time when like life was changing a lot for women, but also it looks at um, Esme's love of words. Like there's so much in the book about words. And what Esme does is as she starts to encounter words that are left out of the dictionary, she begins to make her own dictionary, like her own collection of forbidden and forgotten words. Um, many of which are swear words or like words particularly relating to women or kind of working class groups. So words that are kind of like not part of like the elite world, I suppose. And the book just looks at Esme's life and her love of words and it's just, fantastic um, and it covers such a like wide range of kind of historical things looking at the suffragette movement looking at the first world war and um, obviously looking at the creation of the oxford english dictionary and it is just fantastic i don't know how that book manages to pack so many themes and so many important moments in time into it but it does and it is fantastic and it's moving and it's powerful and it's filled with this love of words that just makes it like an utter joy to read i just absolutely absolutely fell in love with the dictionary of lost words i highly highly recommend it what a book definitely a favorite of the year at number five, I have Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. I finally read this after having had it on my shelves for a very long time, and I loved it. It's a long book, but it is absolutely worth the length, and it didn't even feel long when I was reading it because I just loved the world so much. So this book is set in an alternative version of early 19th century England, where um, magic 
exists or certainly magic has existed there are lots of magicians but magicians can't do magic they just study the historical use of magic as it used to be used um, and one day a man called mr norrell appears who is able to still do practical magic and later um, another magician emerges a man called jonathan strange who could also do magic and the book kind of looks at how the emergence of these two powerful and rival magicians kind of affects society but actually what i love about this book so much is that it's not really about the magicians it's actually about all the characters around them um, who the magicians don't think are as important as them but actually are which I love and um, there's so much that I love about this book I feel like the characterization is amazing the magic system and like the world that is created in this book is wonderful it is such a joy to read because it is so fascinating and so gripping and I loved like all the lore and tangents and like all of the stuff in this book was just wonderful everything about this book was fantastic and just entirely up my street i just loved it hugely and i thought it was fantastic and number four i have the vicar of bullhampton by anthony trollope this is another victorian classic and one that i loved so the vicar of bullhampton was a really really wonderful anthony trollope book as i've already mentioned he is one of my favorite authors and i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this one it tells a story of various characters living in um, the small town slash large village of bullhampton and there are quite a few plot lines going on um in this novel but the three kind of central ones one of them is about a kind of local land dispute between the vicar of bullhampton and a local lord um one of them is a kind of love triangle with um the kind of best friend of the vicar's wife and two men who are interested in her and then the third plot line looks at a murder and um, the kind of aftermath of that and the trial around it and how the trial and um, kind of affects everyone living in this village i loved so much about the vicar of bullhampton i think the characterization was wonderful and the plot was so good it was such a joy to read as anthony trollope always is for me but the themes it looks at as well about kind of like duty and family and the kind of like social criticism within it especially about like kind of society's treatment of women and like what was expected of women at this time i thought was just fantastic so i highly highly recommend the vicar of bullhampton a really wonderful read definitely one of my favorite anthony trollops um, and yeah absolutely loved it down to my top three at number three i have despised and rejected by rose alatini this is a classic from um, 1918 and one that i really really loved interestingly this book was published in 1918 and then quickly banned um, because it ended up provoking a lot of controversy um, mainly because the book is a lot about um, conscientious objectors um, and it was published during the first world war and also because this book does contain several lgbtq plus characters this book chiefly tells a story of the relationship between a man and a woman um dennis and antoinette i would say that um probably dennis is gay and antoinette is bisexual but there's probably a slightly different way that you could read that um, and this book is about kind of their friendship as well as their relationship with various other people around them um, and also what happens when the first world war begins and dennis desperately does not want to fight and this book looks at the kind of conscientious objective movement during the first world war and it looks really powerfully at what it means to be someone who at this point in time is kind of left out of society because of who they are and it's just fantastic like i just love this book so much i just thought it was so historically interesting as well as being a wonderful read with fantastic characterization and really wonderful powerful moments in it i absolutely loved it and i highly highly recommend it what a book and now we're on to the final two my top two books of 2021 so at number two we have the binding by bridget collins i read this um all the way back in january 2021 i think and i just I just loved it. I just loved it so much. It is everything that I like in a book. It is set in an alternative Victorian England um, where the main change is that um, books are not what books are in our world. In this world, um, it is possible to bind someone's memories into a book. And that's what books are. They are people's memories bound into words. And when someone's memories get bound into a book, they lose those memories and they forget. Which means basically that The Binding is all about books, all about memory and all about history because it's set in a kind of alternative Victorian world, which are basically my three favorite things to read about in books. So this was good. This was very good. And also it has a fantastic love story in it. And also the characterization is amazing. And also I think the structure is really clever and not what you expect at all in a really wonderful surprising fantastic way and i just i just love this i just love this very very much it's beautifully written it is masterfully done and i just absolutely adored it i did an individual book review of this at the time when i read it so i'll link that down below but this has absolutely been a highlight of this year and i can't wait to read the portrayals by bridget collins in the future on to my absolute favorite book of the year which slightly outdoes the binding even though interestingly they look at quite a lot of similar themes but 
it has to be another one. The Kingdoms by Natasha Pulley. Natasha Pulley, if you don't know, is one of my absolute favourite authors. Um, I think probably her and Diane Setterfield are jointly my favourite contemporary author. Um, and The Kingdoms was just amazing. This is also set in an alternative 19th century. Um, three of the books in my top five set in an alternative version of 19th century England. So, you know, you can tell what my taste is. Um, the Kingdoms is set in an alternative late 19th century England where um, the French won the Napoleonic Wars. So this book um, is following a man called Joe. Joe is a English slave within the French Empire. Um, and at the beginning of the book he steps off a train and he's forgotten everything about his life he has no memories at all and, and he has no idea what's happened in his life until this point but he is claimed by a man who claims to be his owner but something always feels a bit wrong and then one day he gets a postcard um which says come home if you remember with a picture of a lighthouse on which seems to have been sent nearly a hundred years ago and through various circumstances he ends up going to this lighthouse and when he gets to this lighthouse everything goes on from there and I cannot tell you what happens in this book because I'll spoil it but it is so good this is a book about memory and time and history and love um it is fantastic the characterization in it is incredible Missouri Kite what a character I loved him so much Joe is wonderful too the complexities of the characterization in this book is just like astounding when I think about it and I also love that this book is so fun like the way it plays with history is so fun and so enjoyable and even when this book is like really serious and dark which it is it's also like such a joy to read and like such a fantastic adventure it's just amazing and I just I just loved it so much and Natasha Pulley is just 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 one of the best writers ever so yeah highly highly recommend the kingdoms it is so good you all need to go read it it's fantastic i just yeah well but well but so those are my favorite books of the year i hope you had um, a good reading year in 2021 <laughs> do let me know down in the comments what your favorite books of the year were um do let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and that's it i thank you very much for watching and i'll be back very soon with another bookish video mm -hmm.